Why? Hello and welcome everybody. So today I wanted to go ahead and talk to you guys about the kind of like endgame strategy slash endgame version of the Righteous Fire Inquisitor. Uh, if you guys followed the League Start build with me, then you'll know pretty much what I'm playing. Uh, it's in the POB kind of down below in the red section. It's the Utula's Hunger RF Inquisitor. Now I took a tiny little break from this, uh, this character to work on the Mono Righteous Fire which I'm sure that you guys saw um, you know, in the previous videos that I have made. So let's go ahead and talk about this character. So we are level 98. I'm actually really, really liking this character, even though you know Life Righteous Fire was nerfed a bit. I do believe that this character adapts extremely well to the changes uh, with the combo of the Utula and the Replica Soul Tether. Now this character is probably rocking about half of the end game damage in the POB. I think I'm just a little bit over 2 million, which is not really that incredible, but I like don't have a plus one on my weapon. I don't have a plus one here. My fire trap's only 20 out of 21. So just getting three more plus ones would shoot fire trap up from base level 20 to 23. And then in my helmet, it would be 24. So I'm really, really happy with that. Now, overall, I want to talk about a few things that kind of get everything going together with the character uh, for people who are trying to follow it, but maybe are a bit squishy. In the super late game version, when you have your Utulas and you're trying to kind of like scale your effective life, I personally am using Saffle's frame, but I did not like it until I got this mastery here for 10% of physical from hits taken as chaos. Um, this pairs really well with the lack of physical mitigation this character has. And then you can also further pair this with like a corrupted Saffle's for fizz taken as fire, although this will be a bit expensive. Um, and then I went one step further by going taste of hate for 13% physical damage taken as cold. Again, you don't need any of this stuff to progress. This is mainly because the content I'm running is like really, really rippy. Um, furthermore, do not take this mastery unless you are essentially cap chaos res, as if you are not, you're just going to make physical damage destroy you even more. Uh, I do want to push more into a cluster jewel, so I'm probably going to start working more on clusters. Ideally, you want flow of life plus X. X is entirely up to you. I originally recommended Vile Reinvigoration, which is very good, but they are very rare, and I don't really think they're properly craftable. As long as you're getting Flow of Life, this one can be whatever you want. Uh, as for your large clusters, as long as it's got Prismatic Heart here, I'm pretty happy. Uh, Burning Bright is also another option for map clear. Burning Bright gives like 8% AoE, so my goal is to get maybe uh, one or two Burning Brights, and then I can drop this AoE cluster here for like points, essentially, right? Okay. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and jump into a map and kind of hover over my gear. Uh, one other thing I want to talk about is the Atlas strategy and my charms, since I know I get the question a lot. So I opted out to use life regenerate on charms. So this is like life regen and on ground you apply or you create makes targets take increased damage. And this is a charm with life regenerate with endurance charge when you're hit. Uh, and there's honestly a lot of flexible charms. Like there's even like curse hex proof and Things like that so you know there's a lot of room to to kind of uh, play with one big thing is between tula and replica soul tether you don't really have a lot of sustain so i definitely urge you to pick up some life regen charms until the build feels good um they are really cheap like i'm talking about just a couple of chaos for a 19 percent life regen charm all right <clears throat> with that being said i'm gonna like speed through my links really fast so you guys can pause if you need to see so i'm using a weapon with double dot multi with increase nothing too crazy i think personally i'd rather buy a dot multi scepter uh alt spam for plus one fire regal than multi mod increase and dot multi so it'd basically be like my weapon with plus one fire that would influence the fire trap here i've got the arrogance frost blink vitality remember vitality scales off my charms so Vitality is giving me close to 400 regen, which you times that by two, that's close to 800 regeneration for sacrificing 460 HP. Helmet is a conch burn, or is a, sorry, a more um, elemental burning damage helmet. I crafted this with Essence of Horror. The budget version is using Reforged Fire on the party crafting station, takes about 5,000 life force. Make sure it is Elder item level 82. Here is my fire trap. So fire trap, trap and mine, combustion, life tap. If you get conch effect or you don't want to put RF in your body armor, you can put it here. Be wary, conch effect shrinks your radius. Uh, over on the shield with Saffle's frame, I've got hex bloom, life tap, flammability. The hex bloom allows the uh, flammability to kind of proliferate. Works really well for high density mapping. Uh, my amulet is essentially a dot multi amulet with dexterity and ES. Um, dot multi is priority over plus one fire gems now. Uh, over here, just a really thick resistance ring. <clears throat> over here a minimum frenzy ring now if you don't want minimum frenzy that's fine frenzy charges give you clear speed so frenzy is really nice 
Um, my Brutal Restraint over here is also giving me Onslaught on kill. Sometimes you can find an Onslaught with Frenzy Brutal Restraint, which is fantastic. Over in the Tulas, we have the RF. So it's RF with Awaken in KOE, LE Focus, Burn Damage, Awaken Swift Affliction, and Life Tap. Over in my Boots, we've got Frost Shield, Shield Charge, Faster Attacks, Life Tap. And then on Gloves, we've got Summon Skitterbot, Malevolence, Determination, and Enlighten. If you're not using an Enlighten, you do have to spend three points here. So that would be Mana, Deep Thoughts, into Mana Mastery, 12% Mana Reservation Efficiency. So as for my little lunchbox here, what I like to do is I put my crafting mats in here. So I just like quad chisel into Alk, and then I run it. Um, the only things I don't, I mean, I have map mods kind of explained on my website, so I won't really cover what I'm not running. <clears throat> but let's just put this in and slap it on. So the way my Atlas strategy currently works is we are running Mesa and Jungle Valley. Mesa and Jungle Valley drop what is known as the Fortunate card. So it's basically an RNG chance to acquire Divine Orbs. While doing this strategy, we're also farming Altars. Now, this is an endgame Atlas. You'll probably die on it. Um, the Mono Righteous Fire character can't handle this Atlas. So, um, yeah, it's a little spooky. So this one runs full map modder modifier effect for quantity. It also runs Delirium for a quantity bonus. I will be skipping Wildwood for a little bit because it just takes a little bit longer to clear. And sometimes I do make Higichad Gargantuan mobs that I just don't have enough single target for. Um, you, yeah, that's kind of why I want to scale the single target more on this character. Now, the purpose of how the Atlas kind of ping pongs is actually really cool here. It's an old strategy I've been using for a while. A lot of people do it. Um, you take Wandering Path and you get full adjacent map drop, map drop chance. So if I were to type map drop over here, you will see that I have an 84% chance for one monster to drop a connected map. You can boost that number higher uh, until you're kind of sustaining and then you can lower it a bit. So what that means is <clears throat> adjacent. So if I'm running Mesa, what is adjacent to Mesa? Jungle Valley and Stagnation. So these two would roll that adjacent map until I get one or, you know, 84% chance. It's pretty much like you get one. Now, to make sure that it is always Jungle Valley, we use the next step, which is the blocking method. So we take Shadow Shaping, which says maps found cannot be your favorite. So this strategy here, what we would do is we would block Stagnation, we would block Mud Geyser, and we would block Arid Lake. And by block, I mean favorite. So when you favorite this one, this one, and this one, that eliminates all of them from Jungle Valley and Mesa. So you essentially uh, you essentially create like a ping pong. So you are just ping ponging these two maps back and forth. Both of them are tagged as Sunny, which means both of them can also drop the Fortunate card. With that being said, the last thing I would say I do is I farm Altars a lot for a currency. Uh, I call it the Gotcha Atlas because it basically preys on, you know, pulling the, the big Divine Lottery. As you can see there, the 17 Divine Drop. Um, so that's pretty much where a bulk of my currency comes from but also the divination cards. I like to farm basic currency divination cards on my altars, so that allows me to find things like Divine Beauty, the Separat, and then of course the Fortunate drops naturally from the map itself. This is where I've been generating my wealth on my character. I did not actually find, um, whatchamacallit this go around, Delirium, so we're just gonna kinda speed through the map real fast. So there is the influence proc. Now if you'll notice, when I curse with flammability, you'll notice that it spreads. This is the hex bloom kind of doing work. So I'll curse here, and you'll see how it kind of like spreads around. Even this pack was cursed, right? One thing to note with this atlas, they look fortunate. One thing to note with this atlas is that um, these monsters, the ones that pop up from the green altars, are very, 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 very rippy if you are not a block build or you're not spell suppression. So thankfully, we have a little bit of block from the Saffle's frame, but it's not really enough to face tank them. So this is why Frost Blink is one of my preferred abilities uh, for movement. If I notice that they are like just going crazy shooting me, I will just kind of dodge to the side with Frost Blink. Or since they are pretty squishy, I will just dodge in front of their face and typically kill them really fast with the RF. My RF when I'm mapping is currently sitting at 600k. I think I could boost the tooltip to close to 1 million, which would be pretty sick. Maybe not 1 million, but close to 1 million on reasonable investment, I would like to say. There's the Jungle Valley, which is the return map. Now, I would also like to state that this Atlas kind of is designed to run a lot of maps. It's kind of like uh, what's known as the Alk and Go strat, where you pretty much just Alk the map and you go. Sometimes I chisel, you know, depending on how I feel, if I'm going to be doing Wildwood and Delirium on top of that. But since you have infinite map sustain, quite literally, the faster you go, the more currency you're going to make. 
I'll also state that this is not, you know, the best way to make currency by any means. It's kind of just a way that I enjoy to relax while playing softcore and, you know, kind of stick to what I want to do while still generating wealth. Anyway, that is pretty much about it. I hope you guys had a wonderful time. I hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. If you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to catch me streaming live every day, but Sundays at twitch.tv slash box. I do also have an impossible escape, which I never figured out how much it costs because uh, I kind of streamer RNG'd and dropped it off my first Maven kill. Let's see, how much does it actually cost? Can I check? Oh, these are like eight divines. Yeah, don't spend eight divines on this. This is like not worth it at all. Don't, don't do a chat. In fact, I should probably just sell mine and upgrade the character more. Anyway, see you guys all tomorrow.